creative in scheduling for this month. Uh, but come on up to Samastitihi and we will move through a hour and 15 minute rocket sequence. Classically, the rocket sequence is an hour and a half. So that means it's a little bit of a modified sequence um, with the request of low back, hip, sciatica region. So finding Samastitihi, go ahead and close down the windows of your eyes and start to turn on the sweet sounds of ujjayi pranayama as you contract the back of the throat and allow the breath to become audible. And as you exhale, I want you to visualize a discharge of the nervous system. And then as you inhale, I want you to tap into inspiration from within. And notice how the breath communicates to the nervous system, how it communicates to the structure of the body. And then let's keep the intention of yoga clear. What is yoga? Yoga is chitta vritti nirodaha. Yoga is the practice or the process of discerning between what is thought pattern and what is true self. Paravrashta huswarupe vashtanam. And when we do that, we're able to reside, to live in our inner brilliance, live in a state of inner joy that is independent of that which is occurring around us. Shteram Sukham Asanam. And the purpose of this asana practice is to establish two qualities. Steadiness, so that when an outside force hits us, we keep and maintain our center. And Sukham sweetness. So as we approach these postures, let the posture be the container to explore the inner workings of the psyche and allow each posture to have the intention of those two qualities, steadiness and sweetness. Bring your hands to me. Feel free to set an intention for your practice. And let's begin our practice with the sound of Om. Exhale completely. Sip your inhale in as if you were siphoning in prana. Fill your cup. Exhale, release. Surya Namaskara A. Inhale, arms sweep out and up. Visualize yourself picking your ribs up and off your pelvis. Draw the low belly in and up. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees as much as you'd like to start your practice off. With an inhale, come halfway up. Breathing space from pubis to sternum. And then exhale, step, jump, or walk it back. Option A is to lower all the way to the belly. Option B is Chaturanga Dandasana. Cobra or upward facing dog, whichever one works best for your body in this moment. And then roll over the toes, downward facing dog, Adha Mukha Svanasana. Now go ahead and give this first downward dog some movement. I always like to think of this first downward facing dog as a opportunity to explore what happens what's happening today in my body which is unique every day and our job as the practitioner is to honor that right we don't meet the practice the practice meets us breath to breath moment to moment Go ahead and finish your exhale here. 
Inhale to the top of the mat. As the feet hit, come halfway up, nice and long spine. And then exhale, fold, bending the knees as much as you'd like. Let the head go. Inhale, rise on up, taking the ribs up and off the pelvis to find vertical length. Keep that vertical length as you lower the arms. Round two, excite the legs. Inhale, arms lift. Exhale, spill the pelvis forward with a long spine. Inhale, come halfway up. Stretch. Exhale, Chaturanga Nandasana. Explore opposition between heels and heart. Inhale into the back bend, spin the inner armpit forward, stack shoulders over wrists, and then glide on back through the strength of your core, downward facing dog. Let's check our alignment in downward dog, roll forward into plank. Here you can use the screen for support. Can you get your shoulders right over the wrist and the balls of the feet over the heels? Good. Keep the hips as high as the shoulders. Now without moving hands and feet, stretch the hips up and back. The intention of downward facing dog is spinal extension. And how we experience that is with a long stance. So as you breathe, visualize up and away with the pelvis, creating space. Last exhale here, enjoy it to the bitter end. Inhale to the top of the mat, feet hit, halfway lift, nice and long spine. Exhale, fold, let it go. Inhale, rise on up, catch the crest of your breath in your fingertips. Keeping vertical length, exhale, thumb of stitchy. Good, round three, inhale, arms lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, stretch the front line of the spine long. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana, fire up the legs to lower halfway down. Heart goes forward to go up, upward facing, lift through the sternum, exhale, downward facing. Focus your eyes, meditate on the rhythm of the breath, and see about clearing space both in your posture and in your mind for the yoga to land. Good. Last exhale here. Stretch it down to the tip of the tail. Inhale, ride the breath to the top of the mat, feet hit, halfway lift. Exhale, fold as you let it go completely. Inhale, rise on up, low belly draws in towards the spine. Exhale, sama sitihi. Two more rounds on your own. Inhale. Allow the breath to guide the movement. Finding that sweet, moving, breathing meditation that the sun salutations ignite. Five breaths in your downward facing dog. With your inhale, think inspiration from within. With your exhale, allow it to be a discharge of the system, releasing that which does not serve.
Good morning, Louisa. It's nice to have you. Thanks for joining. No rush on getting back to Samastitihi, but when you arrive, hold it just like seated meditation, and maybe it's supportive to close the eyes. And I say this often, but I always in my personal practice really like to take a pause after the sun salutation and note the inner shift. And it's such the reminder of the power of Abhayasa consistent, devoted practice where it really does not take a lot as that reference point becomes accessible. The reference point that we cultivate over consistency of practice, it's always just a breath away. So feel into the sensations in your skin, the quality of your breath, and take a moment to thank yourself for showing up. Surya Namaskara B. Inhale, Ukkatasana, sink low, but reach high. Exhale, ribs to quad, straighten the legs, Uttanasana. Inhale, unravel the spine, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Chaturanga Nandasana, use the legs to lower halfway down. Inhale, all 10 knuckles stay rooted. Breathe up into the cavity of the chest. Exhale, downward dog. Step right. Create a lot of length between the heels. Inhale, rise on up with the ribs and the arms as you sink down deep with the legs. Exhale, hands on the ground. Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, Ordva Mukha Svanasana. Clear space in the chest. Exhale, Ardha Mukha Svanasana. Step left. Inhale, Virabhadrasana, A, charge into that left knee. Exhale, hands on the ground. You know where you're going. Let the breath lead you. Know that at any point throughout this practice, you can sub out the vinyasa by skipping it, meeting in downward facing dog, or you could sub out downward facing dog for a sweet child's pose. Now, as you study the rhythm of the breath, I want you to see or play around with applying shtiram sukham into the breath. So as you breathe, can you find the sweetness? Can you polish out any wrinkles that reside? And then can you experience the steadiness of the breath? The steadiness that the breath provides both the mind and the body. Inhale to the top of the mat. Feet hit, come halfway up, long spine. Exhale, fold, let it go completely. Full circle, Ukkatasana, sink low, breathe up into the cavity of the chest, lift the sternum, and then swim it home. Samastadihi. Round two, inhale, Ukkatasana. Exhale, Uttanasana, find the end of the breath. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, find the top. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana, match the movement with the breath. Pause to really find the end. Inhale, upward facing dog again. Pause to find the top of the breath. Exhale, downward facing dog. Right foot steps. Inhale, breathe all the way up into the fingertips. Find the crest. Exhale, hands meet the ground. Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, all 10 knuckles root. Exhale, downward dog again. Step left. Create distance between the heels so you can get into the hips. Lift the lowest back rib. And then exhale. 
Breathe your way home. Yoga Chitta Vritti Nirodaha Tada Drashtahu Swarupe Vashtanam Yoga is the practice of discerning between what is thought path, thought pattern and what is true self. And when we do that, even if it's just for a millisecond, we reside, we live in our brilliance. We tap into unwavering joy and stability. Inhale to the top of the mat, feet hit halfway lift. Exhale, fold, let it go. Full circle, ukatasana, inhale, we're going right back in. This time we're gonna rockify. So if you'd like to participate in these up levels, please do, otherwise skip them. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. First up level is bukkasana. This is our last story in the Muscata B. So if you wanna be a little playful here, you're welcome to. And then the exhale brings you through chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog, right foot step. Inhale, slow, deep breath coming into Virabhadrasana A. And then Yogi's choice, how you want to get to the other side. The option for the up level is standing splits. And then we trust our hands here. We jump kick to switch. Left foot forward, inhale, Virabhadrasana A. And then coming back through to make our way to downward facing dog. So standing splits on the left, take it up and jump it back, vinyasa. And then as we arrive to downward facing dog, know that child's pose is there. Let the priority in this moment be experiencing sweetness and stability. Last exhale, up, up and away with the pelvis. Inhale to the top of the mat, feet hit, halfway lift. Exhale, let it go. Let the head relax. Full circle, ukatasana, sink low, reach high. Fill up the cavity of the chest with the breath and then swim at home, samastitihi, equal standing. Close down the windows of the eyes. Take this moment to feel. Okay, step your feet hip distance apart or jump. Bring your hands to your hips. Zip your elbows towards one another. Inhale, sternum high. Draw the low belly in and up, exhale, fold. First two fingers, loop the big toes. With an inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, fold and let it go. Go ahead and work the scapula or the shoulder blade towards the hip so you feel some freedom and ease in your neck. Now play around with weighting or centering your weight, would be a better way to say that, right over the arches of the feet. Awaken the feet. Breathe consciousness into your feet for the feet represent the spine. Two on that. Good, inhale, halfway lift, long spine. Place your hands underneath your feet. If that's accessible, modification will be grabbing opposite elbows. Put a hastasana as we fold. Now again, Center the weight over the arches of the feet. That means we need to cast the weight into the big toe mound and pinky toe mound. Light up the quadriceps. And note, the stronger and more awake both the feet and the legs are, the more the spine surrenders. It lets go, it releases into gravity. You can feel that traction occurring. Inhale, halfway lift. 
Exhale, hands to the thing, hands to the hips, fingers to the low belly. Draw the navel in and up. Inhale, rise on up. Samastiti at the top of the mat. Utkatasana, fierce posture. Sink low with the hips, lift high with the arms. So this is often translated as chair pose, and right, it's pretty obvious why. It looks like you're about to sit in a chair. But when you sit in a chair, you're able to collapse. In this pose, there is no collapsing. That's why it's properly translated into fierce posture. So as you descend the tailbone, weight the heels. Spread between the big toe mound and the pinky toe mound. Good, now zip the front ribs into the back ribs and breathe your sternum up into infinity as if there were a puppet string attached to it. Keep the lifting sensation as you breathe the lowest back rib up towards the thumbs. Good. Interlace your fingers, palms face up, come halfway down, Ardha Ukatasana. Now, can you get your hips as low as your knees? Can you soften through the neck? And I want you to imagine you're trying to pull your hands apart. That's gonna create an external rotation in the shoulders. Good, take one more breath. Breathe to your back ribs. And then set the hands on the ground. Bukhasana. So the knees start to install up into the underarms. If this is in your future practice, weight the hands, touch the toes, put them back down. Keep doing that. That clapping will trick you into the pose. Focus your eyes. Can you establish steadiness and sweetness here? Can the pose become a container to experience the psyche? Exhale, jump or step it back. Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale into the back bend. Exhale, downward dog. Take a full breath here. Inhale up into the cavity of the chest. Exhale, down to the tip of the tail. Right foot steps, Virabhadrasana A. Good. Now imagine the outer edge of the right hip were descending down towards the ground. With that, the inner edge of the left thigh rolls up towards the ceiling. And with that, we're going to feel this revving of the hips. Right hip back, left hip forward. Support that by activating the left foot. Virabhadrasana B, warrior two. Classically, the gaze is at the right middle finger. Take the outer edge of the left knee and spin it behind you. As you do that, really pierce the left big toe mound into the ground. Awaken your back leg. Let's reverse, right palm up, left arm back. Stay low in the hips. Exhale, untita trikonasana. You might wanna shorten your stance a little bit. This is a great place for a block. The right hand could come to a block, it could come to the ground, or maybe the first two fingers loop the big toes. Slow down the rhythm of the breath. And remember that the intention of the posture is to establish two qualities, both in our body and in our mind. Sweetness. And to find the sweetness, we must let go of tension. And then stability. Tap into the strength at your center. Exhale, release the pose. We're gonna square off the hips to the front of the mat. That might help to stand up so that, and, and also us women, it's nice to create a little bit of a wider stance here. Now spill the pelvis forward. And as you do that, I want you to find length in the front line of the spine. And then the left hand's gonna to touch somewhere on the ground as the right arm starts to lift. Now what tends to happen is this right hip hikes up. So imagine a piece of dental floss in the outer edge of your right hip, traction that back. As you do that, light up your left leg and breathe equal length across the side bodies. Good. 
One more breath here. Make it sweet. Exhale, release. Coming into extended side angle. So here's where we want a really big stance. To open the hips, we got to bring the right quad parallel to the ground while the knee stacks right over the ankle. Modification would be forearm to thigh. That's a great variation. Full variation is the hand to the ground. Now watch as I bring my hand to the ground. Sometimes I dump into my hip. Don't do that. Alive in the back foot. Lift through the inner edge of the left thigh to take it into the full pose. And that piece of dental floss you can visualize here. The piece of dental floss is in the outer edge of the right hip. Traction that back to lift your left inner thigh. Good, inhale, Virabhadrasana A, warrior one. Rise up, hands come to the heart center. Cast your sternum forward. I teach this by keeping the left heel anchored. Kathy, that's an awesome modification. You also can come down onto this left knee. And then what we're gonna do is clip elbow to knee. Let's start with bringing this right hip back. It tends to kick forward, shortening the side body. So draw the outer edge of the right hip back as you reach the sternum forward. Then from here, if it's accessible, left hand on the ground, right arm forward. Now alive in your left foot. Let the sensations be in the thoracic spine, the top half. Inhale, rise on up, Virabhadrasana A. Exhale, interlace fingers behind you, tailbone drops, heart lifts. Inhale, find the back bend. Now knit the front ribs into the back ribs, the low belly in and up as you fold. Pack your right hip into the midline and charge into the right knee. Can you stack it right over the ankle? Good. From here, we make our way back to downward facing dog. That might be through a vinyasa, or if we want, we bring our right shoulder underneath the right knee. Take it up into scissors, kundinyasana, and then jump it back. We have choices here, and remember the intention. Shtiram Sukhamasanam. The purpose of these poses is to cultivate steadiness and sweetness. So if that means coming into child's pose, please do. Option A. Option B, curl the toes forward, interlace the fingers, lift the hips, work your core. Draw the front body into the back body. Root down with the hands and the elbows to get out of the shoulders. Option three, Bincha Mayarasana. I'm gonna use a block today. It helps to keep my knuckles firmly on the ground. And if you're using the block, you bring it in between the L of the hand. The middle fingers become parallel and the elbows are shoulder distance apart. Then from here, we curl the toes forward, start to walk ourselves in. And gently, we begin to play with surfing gravity. Joining the necks of the big toes, reach up through the balls of the feet, reach up through the heels. One more breath wherever you are. Exhale, release. And take a breath on the house. And as you pause to feel, I want you to notice the sensations in your right hip versus your left. These standing poses are for opening the hips. The wider and the longer, really the longer our stance is, the more we have access to opening the ball and socket joints. So we'll meet back downward facing dog and let the left side experience the poses. Left foot steps. Virabhadrasana A, come on up. Focus your eyes. Meditate on the experience. Charge into that left knee. Lift the lowest back rib. 
Dear Badrasana B, Warrior 2. Explore the inner world of the bandhas. Allow the sensations of the pose to become the doorway into the present moment. Right there is where yoga resides. Left palm flips, reverse. Open your left side body and then come into Untita Trikonasana. You can shorten the distance between the heels. Kick the right hip forward as you knit the outer edge of the left hip back. Now invite the front body into the back body like you were tightening up a corset. And allow the breath to illuminate the posture. Inhale, rise on up. Widen the distance between the heels. Parvritta Trikonasana, spill the pelvis forward. Draw the navel in and up. Right hand touches somewhere as the left arm starts to lift. Now again, the left hip tends to kick forward. Don't let it knit the outer edge of the left hip back. With that, fire up your back leg like it were the rudder. And then breathe equal length across the side bodies. Good, release the pose. Extended side angle. Untita Parsva Konasana. Wide, long stance. Yoga. Chitta. Vritti. Niroraha. Be clear with your intention in practice. Fuse that intention with attention and allow the yoga to set in. Rise on up, Virabhadrasana A. Hands to the heart center, right elbow meets the left knee. Draw the outer edge of the left hip back as you reach out through the crown of the head. And then maybe right hand on the ground, left arm forward. Can you stack your left knee over the ankle? Charge in. Inhale, come on up, Virabhadrasana. I stay in those legs. Interlace fingers behind you, tailbone drops, heart lifts, inhale. Exhale, humble warrior. Let the back of the neck release. Tack your left hip into the midline and embrace the shaking. Good. Release your hands to the ground. However you want to make your way to downward facing dog. Pause to experience. And then your choice, child's pose, dolphin, or forearm stand. Five breaths in whatever variation suits you. Give yourself a moment in child pose if you're not already there. And as the forehead comes onto the ground, push the bones forward to the top of the mat as the skin descends down to the nose. 
that aponic movement will help to bring the nervous system in the parasympathetic state. And as we're in the place of rest and digest, all the wellness systems of the body, immunity, cell reproduction, even your gut microbiome is affected by that system, digestion, elimination, hormone release, all of that can work. That's why the exhales truly can be a discharge of the system. We'll make our way back to downward facing dog. We're gonna step our right foot forward, pivot open to the long edge of the mat and come all the way up. Hands come to your hips, dip your elbows towards one another. Let the big toes point in and the heels out so that the outer edge of the feet is really parallel to the outer edge of the mat. Inhale, prepare. Prasarita Padantanasana, spill the pelvis, place the hands on the ground. With your next inhale, come halfway up and then exhale, fold. So I've been talking about this a lot in classes because it's been a massive aha moment for me. The position of the knees. So my knees, when I'm mindless, collapse. They draw in. And over time, that's going to definitely damage my knees. <laughs> So we're gonna push down with the big toe mount, firmly root the big toe mount, then create a slight bend in the knees, take the outer edge of the knee back. And with that, the kneecap is gonna align with the second and the third toe. And it really wakes up the outer edges of my hamstrings. And I've been noticing as I explore this on the mat here, I take that out into my world. When I'm cooking, I've been checking in with my knees and I watch them collapse and I bring some life to them. For as we align the body, we align the mind. We wake up from conditioned living. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, hands to the hips, elbows up. Inhale, rise on up. Exhale completely. And in that transition, notice, did you lose the knees? Inhale, arms out to a T. We're going to skip B and come right into C. Interlace your fingers. Tailbone descends, heart lift. Keep space between the navel and the pubis as you exhale fold. And then take a quick glance of the knees, of the feet. Bring life, bring prana, bring intention and awareness. Good, inhale, rise on up. Full rotation of the shoulders, reach up with the arm. And then exhale, swan dive forward. First two fingers are gonna loop your big toes. With an inhale, breathe your spine long. And then exhale, fold into it. And here, you can stay in Prasarita Padantanasana D, a wonderful posture, working the traction of the spine. Or if you'd like, <clears throat> you can come up into tripod headstand. So in that case, we find the plumb line between the tailbone and the crown of the head. And as I come up into this pose, I wanna make sure I can see my middle finger in that my wrist and my elbow are kindly stacked. Zip the elbows towards one another to place the shoulders into a weight bearing position as you come up. And then any options to play are welcome. Join the necks of the big toes, reach high through the balls of the feet and the inner edge of the heel to awaken the inner seam of the leg. And then we'll all slowly come down. As you come down, I want you to hover right above the ground. That's where we get strong. Zip the elbows and then release. And then we're going to work around to our um, right. So come with your left knee on the ground and your right foot, your right knee bent, low lunge, Anjaneyasana, inhale, rise on up. So find the play between, and it really exists right at the navel, navel, where you exhale, descend into the leg, charge forward into that right knee. And then as you inhale, can you lift the lowest back rib up and off the pelvis? 
exhale, the thing is light. And then exhale, charge in. And then inhale, recalibrate and lift. Good. From here, we're going to bring our hands to the inner edge of our right foot. Walk your right toes out to a 45-degree angle. Hands on the ground. You can bring the floor to you with two blocks, or you can come down onto your elbows. It's really whatever feels best for you. If you're looking for more strength, more stability in this posture, then you can curl your left toes forward and lift your left knee. That definitely feels different. If you're looking for more length, and more space, you can roll over to the pinky toe side of the right foot and get more onto the outer edge of the hip. But wherever you go, go with the breath. Go with the marriage between intention and attention. Okay, from here, I always like to spin my left thumb forward. So as I spin my thumb forward, that demands this external rotation of this left shoulder. And then it's like I'm taking the back stroke with the right hand as I grab the foot. What tends to happen in this posture is if we internally rotate the shoulder and we sneak back like this, I miss the back bend. Where if I externally rotate this left shoulder, backstroke lifts the heart, I get this beautiful opening across the chest, and then I can really experience also a twist. Now tap into the stability of the pose. Draw the low belly in and up. Find a squeeze with the inner thighs. Or I should say a hugging in of the inner thighs. Good, last exhale here, see what you can do with it. And then release. Right leg straightens out, Ardha Hanuman. Bring the big toe mound and the pinky toe mound level. Excite the foot, inhale across the spine and then exhale fold. If Hanuman Asana is in your practice, you're welcome to go there. Remember, we're looking for stability. And if we pass our edge in any posture, we lose that stability as well as the sweetness. For me, if I'm looking to establish the sweetness in the posture, I definitely have to lose the ambition and step into a place of receptivity. Step out of a place of doing. Good, bend into the right knee, pivot around. So we're gonna do the other side. We'll start with Anjaneyasana, low lunge. And it's really tricky here with these screens. In both Ashtanga Yoga and in Rocket, we kind of spin around the mat. And when we're in a class setting, that's totally fine. I feel like you kind of walk around, but sometimes it's nice to keep the screen in front of you. And in that case, just do as you need. Send the tailbone. Draw the navel in and up. And breathe the ribs up and off the pelvis. Let's stay for one more breath. And lizard pose. So we've all heard this. The pose starts when we want to leave it. <laughs> and in this style of yoga, stemmed all from Ashtanga Vinyasa Yoga, we get five breaths. And start to study. When does that sensation to abort arrive in the posture? Whatever variations you did on the first side, please do those on the second. Okay, from here, spin the right thumb forward. Find the external rotation of the right shoulder. Back stroke with the left arm, 
open the chest, grab the foot. Good, now draw the low belly in and up, descend the tail and go for it. So we've all heard this quote as well, probably on your tea bag. <laughs> the way we do one thing tends to be the way that we do everything. And this practice of yoga is of self-inquiry, self-discovery. And so if we allow the posture to be the container for that, to get to know ourselves better, we really want to start to study all aspects of our psyche within the posture. Exhale, release. Ardha Hanuman here, straighten up that left leg. Take an inhale across the spine, exhale, fold. So start to ask questions like, how do I enter and exit the pose? When I hit my edge, what's the inner dialogue like? When the pose gets really uncomfortable and hot, how do I respond or react? And then as we start to create crystal clarity on that, we can start to study the way we approach our relationships, our work, our to-do list, our exercise uh, routine, our habits. I mean, that's far more interesting than drawing your left hip back in this posture. <laughs> that's what creates a lifelong practice. Bend into your left knee. Walk over to the long side of your mat. Option A is malasana. And you just might want to go here because this just feels really good right now. <laughs> you can stay here and then sit down. Or you can start to wiggle your hands back. Trust your hands. Drop your hips, extend through your legs for five, lift your chest, four, three, two, one, set it down, good work, Upta Vista Konasana. Now this is another pose that the knees can really collapse in and that's my pattern. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring massive in and intelligence into the legs, into the feet specifically. And even though we don't have a reference point like the floor for the big toe mound, I want you to drive through the big toe mound and then match that effort with the pinky toe mound and then the ball of the foot starts to stretch. Good, now from here, with that intelligence in the feet, spin the outer edge of the knees back down to the ground. Plaster the quads to the bone. So you're lifting the whole quadricep. Sometimes it helps to give it a good smack. Descend the tips, or excuse me, descend the sitting bones and then exhale, fold. And sometimes it's nice to keep the thumbs in the crooks of the hips to anchor those sitting bones. And then as you come in, check in. So for me, you can see I created that pattern again. It takes a lot of self-awareness to adjust these patterns. I've probably been doing that for my whole life. Outer edge of the knee spins down. Awaken the feet, awaken the legs. And note, when the legs are stable, the spine is sweet. Inhale, rise on up, side bends, right arm along the right leg, left arm up and over. Breathe horizontally into your left side body like you would gill. Good, inhale, rise on up, switch sides. Anchor your right sitting bone. Allow the breath to sing you into the present moment. Good, inhale, rise on up. Okay, we're gonna slightly diverge from the sequence. I mean, slightly, slightly. And we're gonna get a little deeper into the hips. And so this is, Option A would be this first section. You're gonna lie onto your back and take figure four, which is just such a lovely pose. It's extra lovely because you have the information of the mat so that you can really let the muscles of the face and the head relax. You can use the intelligence or the reference point of the mat to support back body breathing. So that's option A. Option B, is the fire log. 
and it's called that for a reason. <laughs> so we're going to sit in the discomfort of this posture so that we can experience change. So from here, the right leg is up, the shins become parallel and bring massive intelligence into the feet. Really light up the feet. Anchor the sitting bones. This right sitting bone tends to get light. Don't let it drive it down into the ground and then start to fold as you're ready. Focus your eyes. Relax into the sweet rhythm of the breath and play around with fusing your intention with attention. Note that right foot. Be super active with that right foot. Good. If you're in fire log, bring your hands to the bottoms of the feet. Press hands into feet, feet into hands. Get a little deeper into that hip. Good, inhale, rise on up. Now this is where we can all join. So if you're on your back, sit up. You're gonna straighten out your left leg and then you're gonna hook. Option A is to hook with the hand. You're gonna hold the right foot or you're gonna hook it into the crook of the elbow. Now this left foot tends to sickle. Watch, if I do that, all the tension goes right into my ankle and my knee is not locked, so it's not safe. And basically what it's doing is this rotation on the knee. The knee is a hinge joint. It is not designed to work this way. I mean, it has a little give because of the ACL, but we don't wanna emphasize that at all, strain that. So as we lock and load, this left foot, this knee is protected, and then we can have the movement of the ball and socket joint of the hip take this stretch. So from here, sometimes we approach this posture and steadiness is what we need. And in that case, focus the eyes and let the movement of the breath release the tension. Other times we come here and just a little bit of rocking and rolling can get the gunk out of that hip. Now keep the foot active and really extend up through the crown of the head. Deeply breathe into the experience. Okay, from here, right hand goes out, rock over to your right and get right into the juice of the pose. Once you find that spot, and I always like to think of it as like a guitar riff, like <laughs> <laughs> so once you find that guitar riff in your hip, oh yeah, exhale, discharge the system. Inhale, find inspiration to approach your edge with curiosity and sweetness. Okay, we're going to keep going on their hip. So come on up. You might have to shift around a little on your mat. You're going to take half happy baby so you're going to lie back option a is to bring the left knee towards the chest you're working the right heel right over the ankle as you kind of start to pump the knee down if you straighten that left leg it's going to feel different bring energy into the left foot and then if you're ready for more reach out through the ball of the left foot and really slowly lower the leg and then hover it and you can feel the opposition of the left leg charging forward and the right knee descending to open the hip. Go ahead and relax something. Now from here, if you'd like to keep going, you're gonna bring the shin across your chest. I like to start with a manual adjustment, right thumb up, Bring it into the crook of the right hip and traction the outer, oh, hello, the outer edge of the hip towards the top of the mat. Good. Keep intelligence into that right foot so you're safe in the knee. And then if you're ready, you can hook the foot into the crook of the elbow. You can pause here or you can take the pillow. In this case, my right arm backstroke comes around my head and my fingertips interlace. Now again, what you do with that left leg is gonna impact the sensations of the pose. So if you bring the knee into the chest, it's left. If you charge through the ball of the foot, 
it's more. Now relax. Soften the tension that's born of the effort. Beautiful. Let's come back to half happy baby. Good. Now straighten your right leg up. You know, you might need to kind of release it with a couple rolls here. That feels good to me. And then you're going to take either a strap or a belt or your first two fingers around your right big toe. Now, before we do, or as we do that, I want you to imagine that the outer edge of this right hip, we're drawing forward. Charge up the left leg like you were standing on it. And now with an exhale, draw the navel in and up and kiss your shin. Outer edge of the right hip draws forward. Outer edge of the knee draws forward. Bring intelligence into the legs. Exhale, release the head, leg out to the right. Modification would be holding the knee and bending the knee. What tends to happen here is this left hip pops. Don't let it. Keep your left hand on your left hip. Look to the left. Bring activity into the left leg. Good, leg back up, cross over. So here we grab the pinky toe side of the foot. If you have a strap, you can grab hold of the strap with your left hand, right arm out. Take the outer edge of the right hip, spin it to the top of the mat so that the side bodies are equal in length. Let it feel good. Good, come back to center. Bring both knees into your chest, close your eyes and notice. For me, it's like a dramatic difference between right and left at this point. And then make some circles with the knees to work out the lower back. Rock up, we get to do it again. So option A, you start in the figure four position with the left foot fully active. Option B, you come up into the fire log. Now don't just take what I say for face value. The beauty of yoga is its self-awareness. And so in this posture, I think the most important alignment cue is that the left foot is active so that the knee socket is safe. But ask yourself, if I soften and sickle this left ankle, what does it feel like? Can I feel a dumping into this left knee? If I activate it, what does it feel like? Yoga really clears the lens in which we see from. It's like the daily brushing of our teeth. It's the daily cleaning of the windows that we look out into the world from. And as we clean the windows, the light shines brighter. And basically that light is our inner wisdom, our inner knowing, our intuition. If you did on the first side, bring hands to the bottoms of the feet, press hands into feet, feet into hands. And the yogis call that the sixth sense. And you might become aware. The more consistency, the more devotion, the more showing up we do in this practice, the more we start to trust and listen and hear the inner knowing, the gut feeling. Take a deep exhale into the left sitting bone, ground it. Inhale, rise on up, pick up your left leg. So this little baby cradle action, left foot stays active. Sit up nice and tall, right? Tendency. When stuff gets intense in the posture, we tend to avoid. And you can see it in your container, in your body. We push away. We try to hide. Curl the spine. Sit up nice and tall. Approach the sensations with curiosity with sweetness, with compassion.
Allow the breath to be deep. Good, rock over to your left. Find the guitar riff at a sweet rock concert. <laughs> and then smile and let go. <laughs> Good. From here, you might have to wiggle around a little bit on your mat. You're kind of coming to half happy baby. And guess that, what? Each side is not created nor treated equally. So let the pose meet you where you are in this moment. Option A, we bring the right knee close. Option B, we charge into the right leg as if we were standing on it. Big toe mound, pinky toe mound, even in length. Start to lower reach to the ball of the right leg, hover. And as you hover, feel the opposition create space. Feel the opposition create stability. Don't lose the intelligence of that right foot. Deep breathing into your back body. Let the back body communicate with the reference point of the mat. Surrender the muscles of the face. Relax the jaw and the tongue. Soften the tension that's born of the effort. Okay, from here. Ooh I don't know about you, but I'm feeling this. Cross this left shin over your chest. Maybe hook it into the crook of the elbow or into the hand. And then maybe find the pillow. Left hand backstroke, bends at the elbow, and connects. This is one of those really confusing postures. <laughs> now take the outer edge of the left hip, spin it to the top of the mat. And breathe into the sensation. Let each exhale be an opportunity to discharge. Let each inhale be an opportunity to find inspiration from within. Beautiful. From here, release that. Send the left leg high, and we're going to find that external rotation in the hip. So the outer edge of the left hip spins to the top of the mat. Left pinky, or excuse me, first two fingers, peace fingers, loop around the big toe. Right hand on the right hip to keep the right leg strong and stable. Low belly in and up. Exhale, kiss the shin. Supta Padangustasana. Good, release that. Keep the right hip grounded like you had a sandbag on that right hip. Open the left leg, gaze to the right. Again, charge through the balls of the feet. Take the outer end of the left hip, start to energetically spin it to the top of the mat. And allow the breath to take over. Good, come up, switch hands, either onto your strap or onto the foot, and open things to the right as you gaze left. Now be mindful that the outer edge of the left hip spins to the top of the mat. You can even hook your thumb in there to really get the guitar riff. Breathe horizontally into your side body. Find sweetness in the experience. Good, bring that leg up. Knees into the chest, close your eyes, and feel the residue. Feel the energy, the prana as it moves around. 
tap into the sensation in your skin. Yoga is really all about horizontal growth. The word samadhi can be translated as our ability to hold multiple perspectives at once. And so as you pause here and feel the vibration in the legs, notice how you start to expand energetically beyond the skin and the bones. Make some circles on your low back. And then I think we need a vinyasa. So rock on up. Cross at the ankles, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing, descend the tail, open the heart. Exhale, downward facing. Pause here, find spinal extension. Okay, look through, step all the way through. And we are going to slip into our back bends here. So come onto your back. I'm going to participate in. Setu Bandha Sarvangasana, the bridge pose, but please know if Urdhva Dhanurasana is in your practice, enjoy it because it's an amazing pose and you should totally take it. <laughs> As you're ready, come into the pose. Urdhva Dhanurasana, the hands are by the ears, the fingers are facing the toes. Being mindful that the elbows stay over the wrist and are shoulder distance apart for the duration of the pose. Or we come into the bridge where we lift the hips, walk the shoulders onto the back, and maybe interlace the fingers. Now in your back bend, your legs should be saying, oh my, and your spine should feel sweet and soft. So start to hook your tailbone up into infinity, charge the heels into the ground, traction the heels towards the shoulders, hello hamstrings, and then visualize a beach ball between your knees and deflate it. Spin the inner thighs down towards the ground. And take a big inhale up into the cavity of the chest. Clear space. And then exhale lower down. Feel the residue. This is how we get yoga high right here. Round two. Set it up with intelligence. Infuse your intention, a clear tension. Yoga shita vritti niroraha. Tara drasta huswa rupe vashtanam. We do yoga so that we can live in our brilliance. We can experience unwavering joy that is independent of what's happening around us. Infuse that intention with attention with focus, with discipline. Exhale, release, let it go. Last one, best one. See if you can turn the effort over to the breath. Take it up. Five. Four, three, lean into the discomfort with curiosity. Two, one, really beautiful work. We're going to bring our knees into our chest. Create some gentle circles on the low back again. Arms out to a T, shift over to the right, gaze to the left. Let your left knee catch up with the right. You can use your hand to assist that. And exhale down into that left shoulder, anchor it. Good, come back to center, switch it out. Again, the right knee, the top knee is gonna catch up with the bottom knee. Right shoulder works to the ground, draw the navel in and up. Good, 
You can come back to center. All right, from here, straighten out your legs. Join the necks of the big toes. Interlace your fingers behind you. Zip your elbows up towards the ceiling and get your shoulder blades off the ground. Now, your drifty, your gaze, your focus is at the low belly. Drop the navel down towards the ground. Curl the tailbone up towards the ceiling. So feel that navel drop, tailbone curls. With that, the pelvis starts to lift subtly. We're going to take 10 pumps of that. So I hope that makes sense. Navel descends, tailbone curls. With that, you're going to feel this subtle lift of the pelvis and of the legs. Okay, we'll call that four, three. It's a very small movement. Two, going in the wrong direction. We'll call that six, <laughs> seven, eight, nine, ten. Now maintain that lift. Tailbone up, tailbone up, navel down. Exhale, lower your right leg. Bring maximum intelligence into the foot. Inhale, pull it up. And as the leg moves, the navel does not. Exhale, navel to spine. Tailbone up towards the ceiling. Energize the left leg, inhale up. Keep going at your breath. The exhale is gonna lower the leg. Inhale is gonna pull it up. One more each side. Exhale, lower. Inhale up. Exhale. Inhale, good. Pike up, Navasana. If Navasana is in your practice, take it. I'm still modifying, so I'm gonna hold the backs of the knees. It's a great modification. Find a tall, long spine. I think we may have lost somebody. Good, from here, let's cross the ankles. You're welcome to do two blocks. We're gonna draw the knees in towards the chest. Inhale up. Three rounds, five, four, three, two, one. Cross knees in, inhale up. Last one, five, four, three, two, one. Cross, hug in, inhale up. Good, vinyasa, beautiful work. Stretch out an upward facing dog. Give yourself an extra breath and downward facing dog. Look through your hands, step jump or walk all the way through. Option A, take a block or a big dictionary, slide it underneath your hips. A bolster could work as well as a folded up blanket. And you can take your legs up here, Viparita Karani, or we're coming into shoulder stand. And in that case, I always like to start in Halasana. Note the position of my shoulders. I slip my palm up and I take the scapula onto the back. Now I'm on the ridge of the shoulders. I take the hands to the low back, join the necks of the big toes, reach up through the balls of the feet and the inner edge of the heel, and feel the inner thighs turn on. Now steady your gaze and allow the breath to move freely and intelligently through you. Like your breath, we're the eyes to consciousness. Breathe into the subconscious. Breathe into that which is unseen. Let it come forth to be transcended. Kolasana, toes touch the ground behind your head. And if it's available, interlace your fingers. Breathe into your back body.
Good. Knees fall to the ears. Legs up and slowly unravel, palms face, face down. Sit on your hands, lift your elbows to lift your chest, head falls back. Fish. Exhale, release, rock through your final vinyasa of the practice. Make it sweet and meditative. And give yourself a pause and downward facing dog, think traction of the spine. Sit down. Feel free to sit up on something and grab the opposite elbows behind you. Take a big inhale. This is a great place to use a block. You can place the forehead on a block or on the ground. Keep your eyes open here and visualize feeling in the benefits of the practice. And you can stick with that mantra of inhale is illuminating inspiration from within. And the exhale is discharging your nervous system, releasing anything that is not serving. Come on up. Five more rounds of audible breath. Gyana Mudra. The way we do one thing tends to be the way we do everything. So as you approach these last five breaths, Study yourself from a place of curiosity and love. The way a mother would observe a child. No judgment. Just looking to explore with clarity. Good, now release all effort of breath, get light. And then go ahead. You can stay just where you are, or Shavasana is here. Get it while it's hot, enjoy. Turn the breath to the low belly. Release all sensations of effort and tension. And visualize your container filling with prana.
together with great energy. May our, fruit, our studies be fruitful and may we live together in harmony. Om, peace, peace. peace. So take your time making your way back to your seat. We'll conclude our practice with one OM together, followed by the Shanti. So exhale. Oh. Shanti. Shanti, Shanti. Thank you for practicing. Namaste. Beautiful work, everybody.